I usually tell people if you're going to spend money on either rod, reel or line, like of those three things, I think the rod really is like where the majority of your money should go. Hey guys, I recently had the host of Tackle Talk podcast, Andrew Hayes, on the Kayak Fishing Obsessed show not too long ago. And I asked them to come on the show because I saw they did a seminar down at the National Expo down in Columbus on the importance of rod selection. And so in his opinion, these are the only five rod reel combos you need for 95% of fishing. All right, let's go. And so what I did is a long time ago, I basically made myself five combos that I thought could do like 95% of the type of fishing that we're going to do here in Ohio. And yeah. so that's really like my, I guess, quote unquote, seminar that I tell people is like, you're going to walk around this expo or you're going to be, you know, the Bassmaster Classics coming up. People are going to be walking around that expo with a thousand different rods to choose from. The thing that they want you to think is that you need 37 rods. And at the end of the day, you really don't. You really need like four or five. And so what I did is I kind of like broke them down into five different kind of like named combos that will go through and really what I think you can handle everything you want. So the first, and this is like one of the ones that is a little bit controversial sometimes, but I really think Ooh, you only need off. one spinning rod. Okay. Like, okay. I think unless you're on like, you know, St. Clair or something and you're just ultra light line, ultra finesse drop shot something, you can do almost everything in the world you need with a spinning rod with a seven foot medium fast. Like you just, you can, it can throw everything. You can throw neds, you can throw wacky rigs, poppers, blade baits, uh, grubs, inline spinners, drop shots. You can jerk bait with it. You can throw spooks on it. You can throw little paddle tail swim baits. Like everything that you need to do with a spinning rod, you can do with a seven foot medium. And so that was one of the big things for me is like, why do I have four spinning rods that are all basically the same combo? Like, I don't need this many. And so I shrunk that down. I really think you can do that. If you get like a 2,500 size spinning reel and you put it on there, you throw 10 pound braid on it with like, uh, you know, keep a leader with you if you need it. If you really want to tie a leader, that's great. Well, and you can have multiple of this if you want, right? If you're going to go out there and you're going to be throwing only finesse, then yeah, maybe you do have two of this spinning combo. But it's not like you need, oh, I need a 6.9 and a 6.11 and a 7.1 and a 7.4. It's like you can do almost everything with just a seven foot medium. So combo number two, I would say, and this is the one where if if you have like a, a casting rod already, and then the next question obviously everybody has is, okay, well, if I do need one different rod for something, what's that rod? Because I have like a seven foot medium casting rod. What's the next one I need? You need a crankbait rod. Like a crankbait rod is probably the most different rod that you're going to have in these five compared to everything else. And so a crankbait rod, obviously, you're going to want to make sure that it's a cranking specific rod, because when you go to the store and you buy a crankbait rod, as long as it's a crankbait rod, a medium heavy crankbait rod and then a medium heavy fast rod is going to feel light and you know night and day different the cranking rod is going to feel like a wet pool noodle and the fast rod is going to feel a little bit more not broomsticky but you know what i mean like it's going to be a lot stiffer and so you're going to have a lot more wobble in that crankbait rod which obviously you want because this is where especially when i was new i got really confused about all these people talking about moderate bends and parabolic bends and all that kind of stuff basically all they're trying to say is with a cranking rod, you want that sucker to like when it loads up and you set the hook on a fish or when you put any sort of tension on it, you want more of an arc in it and you want the bend to be farther down the rod than you do all the way up top. So when people talk about like a fast rod, the bend in that rod, it's not necessarily how much it bends, it's where it bends. And so a fast rod bends more closer to the tip, which is nice because you can set the hook faster. It loads up faster, which means you get the tension on that hook faster and you can penetrate. So for a Ned rig or something, for instance, that's what you want. But then if you're going to use like treble hooks, treble hooks are the one thing where it's a delicate process because you want to hook that fish. You want to keep it pinned, but you also don't want to rip them out of the fish's mouth. And so you want a lot of play in your rod and sometimes line. You can get into that conversation here in a second that we will too. But, you know, especially your rod, you want a much more forgiving rod. And so get you like a seven to seven, three medium heavy crankbait specific rod. So even if you're on a budget, you can go to a Bass Pro, you can get like their cranking sticks that I think are probably 70 something bucks or 80 something bucks, something like that. Um, Furies in the Dobbins line makes a really good crankbait rod. There's a lot out there in that kind of like hundred ish dollar range that you can find. That's pretty good. But then the big thing on that is obviously with that more moderate, that more bendy rod, you're going to want a slower reel. And the one thing I, the only way I've really thought to explain this and when people are like, why do I need a slower reel to crankbait? Why can't I just reel my current reel slower? It's like, well, you can, 
But if you want to think like uh, like riding a bike, like if you're going to ride a bike uphill, what do you do? You lower the gear. Right. Yeah, you go down a gear because what happens is you do have to pedal more, but it's way easier to pedal versus if you kept it in seventh gear, you would have to pedal less, but it's so hard to move those gears and you're just going to wear yourself out. It's the exact same thing with throwing a crankbait because there's so much water displacement and so much um, tension on that and so much, you know, that, that things just digging 15, 16, 20 feet down. If you're throwing deep divers, like you really have to have much more of a slower reel so that you can actually go through. You can make your full winds. You're not going to tire out your arm or your hand or really overwork your reel. And so slower reel, obviously, for crankbaits is uh, definitely the go to. And it's something that you're seeing a lot of reels move away from now. So it used to be like five to ones were fairly normal. You could find five to one reels all over the place. And now they're like a dying breed and everybody wants eight to ones and nine to ones and 10 to ones and you know, yeah. more bonkers. That's like a slow reel is definitely the move for your crankbaits. And so get you a five to one, six to one, and then line, you're going to have some people that are going to say mono and that's okay. Um, the reason for mono, obviously is it's got a little bit more stretch in it. So again, if you have crankbaits, that's great. It's a little bit more forgiving. I'm going to go with fluoro because the bigger thing for me is if I have like a DT 16 and I want that, you know, Rapala to get down to 16 feet, fluorocarbon is going to help you do that because fluorocarbon sinks. Obviously, it's going to help you get down to like the desired running depth of that crankbait, which is the name of the game with crankbaits is you want that thing to be banging off the bottom. You don't want it to be going through the middle of the water column. Just doing this. You want it to be off of wood, off of rock, going all over the place. And that's where you're getting your strikes. And so that's your second uh, combo there is really just your cranking specific combo. You can throw medium divers, deep divers, almost any crankbait. Um, you can throw square bills on that rod if you really want to. And then kind of like sneaky uses for that, depending on what crankbait rod you get. A lot of people now are moving to more of a moderate rod for spinner baits and for chatter baits. Okay. So for me, I throw my chatter bait actually on the same rod that I throw my deep cranks on. It's like a seven, uh, three, like I think it's a technically a heavy, but it's a Dobbin. So it's really more like a medium heavy, um, but it's a glass rod. And I love it. And it's one of those things where I'd thrown chatterbaits on fast rods my whole life. And I missed, you know, a decent amount of chatterbait fish. And what I've really found through, I can't remember who we're talking, maybe Wheeler on our yeah. show, someone we were talking to. And he was like, well, you know, probably why, right? Is because you were reacting too fast. And that fast rod was really popping that chatterbait right out of the fish's mouth with the blade right there where with a slower rod it obviously slows you down so when you go to set the hook um you you've got a little bit more forgiveness in there where it will slow down your hook set and you let that fish get that whole hook in its mouth and then penetrate and so i don't know i really like how it goes i like the way that that rod loads up on a chatterbait especially in the kayak it's been awesome and so you'll see people use that rod for that too it just depends on which one you get combo number three real easy one this is going to be your like seven foot medium fast rod so this can be if you want to call this your jerk bait rod great if you want to call it your top water rod great but this is the rod where like when you have it in your hand your palm and your reel and you're working it down like you're mm. twitching something or you're actually you know you're walking a spook you're twitching a jerk bait this is where you're actually imparting a lot of motion on this uh, little lure and usually they're trebled lures obviously but this is like seven foot medium fast get like a six to one or a seven to one uh casting reel this is the one rod that i'll keep monofilament on because if i'm gonna throw a spook on it obviously i like mono and then for jerk baits too depending on what jerk bait you're throwing the thing about a jerk bait is you can always make a jerk bait sink but you can't always make a jerk bait float and so if you've got a jerk bait and you've got mono on it and for some reason that jerk bait wants to rise up a little bit because you have mono you can always add like suspend strips or wrap something around the trebles or you know that kind of stuff and you can always add weight to kind of balance it out and so i like that again you're going to throw a lot of trebled baits on this and so the extra stretch of mono is great so if you're gonna have mono on one of your rods this is the one that i do it this is my top water poppers spooks uh prop baits i get question all the time like what do i throw a whopper plopper on it's like mm -hmm. this is the rod that most of the time i would throw a whopper plopper on um square bills and jerk baits all that kind of stuff you can throw on this rod um the next one would be just your all around i call this like my workhorse setup basically this is like the one that everybody starts out with like a seven foot to seven three medium heavy fast rod this is like your do everything rod and so if you were only going to buy one casting rod this will do like almost everything that you, you know, uh, within reason would want it to do. Get you like a seven to one or eight to one casting reel. I put pretty heavy fluoro on this, so I'll go anywhere from 16 to 20. 
I just like the little overkill of knowing that when I set the hook on a jig fish or I set the hook on a Texas rig or something, the last thing I have to worry about is knot strength or line strength. I'd rather just be able to, you know, we call it uh, giving them the beans. I like to give the fish the beans a little bit, right? And make sure that I can lay into it and not worry about my line. And so I'll go a little bit higher on this. If you told me like, Andrew, you can throw 20 pound fluoro and you're going to get 40 bites today or you can throw you know uh 12 pound fluoro and you can get 50 bites today i'll still go with the 20 pound fluoro because i know that those 40 bites that i get i'm going to be able to you know lay the meat down and get those fish Mm -hmm. in and set the hook like i want to and so that's just kind of my philosophy on it but some fairly heavy fluoro is what i'll go with this can do texas rigs flipping jigs football jigs chatter baits if you don't want to use your you know crank and rod obviously for chatter baits this is one that most people will use um spinner baits you can honestly do like almost everything buzz baits with this rod the sky's kind of the limit and then your fifth rod and a rod that you do kind of need a again a specialized rod for is your you know like a meat stick rod so like your frogging and flipping rod is going to be a lot heavier than most of the things we've already talked about so this is like seven three heavy fast you can even go mag heavy depending on what brands you're using but just like an absolute broomstick of a rod because this is the rod where when you're throwing a frog in slop or you're punching through real heavy stuff you want to make sure that when you set the hook and you have leverage on that fish you never let the leverage go and so just as beefy of a rod as you can use i'll throw 65 pound braid on this thing and just a big fast reel so this is the one reel again if you're going to go eight to one or whatever this is the reel to do it because again the name of the game on all of these is picking up line and so when you set the hook on a frog or you set the hook flipping picking up line and getting that slack out of your line is the difference between landing the fish and not landing the fish and so yeah this is your meat stick you can frog punch flip um anything with like heavy vegetation or cover and then your other two like sneaky options you can throw a buzz bait on this rod if you want to and then you can also in a pinch right a lot of people are throwing alabama rigs now and that's like a big yeah. thing around here you can throw alabama rigs on this rod if you really wanted to so All right those are kind of like if you had to pare down your combos to five of them you have one spinning setup you have a cranking rod a top water or a jerk bait rods so like your little shorter smaller rod um, you'll have a workhorse setup that you can do almost everything. And then you'll have your like frog and meat stick rod. And really at the end of the day, like you have those five rods, you can throw almost everything in your tackle box. Hey guys, Andrew would tell you, and so would I, that at the end of the day, we all know that this is personal preference. So if you have a different opinion, please let me know in the comments below. Also, this is an edited down version of an entire hour long show. So if you're interested in that video, you can check that out right there.